Hello everyone and welcome to the last big tournament of the year. It is the FIDE World Rapid and Blitz Championship. Uh, first we are having three days of Rapid and then two days of Blitz. And uh, this is a game from round one. Uh, Samuel Tersahakian versus Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Abdusator of Nodrbeck will be defending his title as the World Rapid Champion. And Magnus, uh, of course, is playing as the highest rated player. Uh, mostly, uh, I will cover Magnus's games uh, if, if they're not going to be a snooze, a snooze fest. But you guys, of course, uh, do use hashtag suggestion and I will try to cover as many games as possible as um, there are so many games being played there are like uh, om I, I think almost 180 players uh, playing this so uh, many many great games will be played uh, so many uh, fighting games are happening it's uh, I mean the the bar is just going left and right it's absolutely crazy it's being played uh, in Kazakhstan in Almaty and it will be played uh, the the rapid section from 26 to 28 of December price fund is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and first prize for winning the world rapid champion is sixty thousand dollars players will have 15 minutes um, uh, for the entire game plus 10 seconds increments starting from move one so it's a rapid format of course as it's the world rapid championship uh, and uh, if uh, there is a tie for first place players will go into a playoff they will play blitz games three plus two and if those uh, end in a draw uh, there will not be armageddon but they will continue playing three plus two uh, until one player wins so uh, sort of a di different than what we're used to but uh, uh, you know the the world champion will not be decided by an Armageddon game this time so let's check it out it's quite a game uh, Samuel with the white pieces opens with uh, pawn to e4 and like in the previous game that we've shown uh, we have the French defense pawn to e6 so let's see what Magnus prepared for this um, a very strong event d4 d5 we have knight to c3 and the Magnus goes for the vinegar variation with bishop to b4 which is a very very uh, uh, uh crazy stuff right uh, from the from the opening e5 and now pawn to c5 so this is all uh, very very main um uh st stuff uh a3 attacks the bishop bishop captures on c3 b captures and now three moves are the most popular here knight e7 queen c7 and queen a5 but magnus goes for uh knight to c6 which is sort of the fourth fourth uh, most popular move but still uh, consider very much main theory queen g4 going after the g7 pawn and g6 and of course samuel strikes with h4 uh, he wants to play h5 and uh, open up his rook uh, and uh, the problem is if you block this with h5 as black usually does then queen f4 and it's very very annoying to play this uh, for black knight is coming to f3 to g5 and so on so uh, there uh, are some options you could play here magnus goes for queen to a5 he puts pressure on the c uh, c3 pawn and now bishop to d2 defending and there are a couple of moves that were played in this position queen a4 is always very popular preventing white from playing a4 and putting pressure on that c2 pawn also knight to h6 has been attempted here sort of a, an idea if bishop captures then you can capture on c3 uh, but it's actually a very bad move after queen g5 that knight is just looking very silly h5 is coming and the black will fall apart very quickly so magnus instead goes h6 and it is now as of move nine that we have a completely new game so white goes a4 uh, always a, a good move taking away that a4 square from the white queen and now pawn to c4 magnus closes the queen side and he will now focus all the attention on the um, uh, on the on the king side whether he can execute f6 or f5 at some point uh, then it should be very good for him knight to f3 uh, the knight does not have access to g5 so more often than not we will see queen f4 knight h2 knight to g4 and the knight will have access to the f6 square bishop to d7 magnus prepares the castle queen side and now uh, the immediate queen f4 preventing castles as the f7 pawn is hanging so uh, rook to h7 now the f7 pawn is defended and magnus is ready to castle knight h2 the knight begins uh, his maneuver queenside castles by magnus and now knight to g4 putting pressure on that f6 square rook to f8 preparing to execute f5 or f6 depending on what white plays and now bishop to e2 uh, we have queen back to d8 the queen no longer has a, a, a purpose on a5 and now uh, you could con uh, consider knight to f6 and maybe you even should for example knight f6 you trade everything and it's a very nice position for white black will have trouble with this f6 pawn the rooks are completely blocked in it's a light square bishop so you can't reach the dark square pawn and the knight will need uh well quite a few squares to reach that pawn for the moment it's impossible to reach the pawn so white will have a firm grip on the position so uh it's it's definitely a possibility but in the game we have queen to g3 
uh, and now comes pawn to f5. Magnus does not miss this opportunity to, to, to prevent knight to f6. We have e captures on f6, al passant, knight captures on f6, but uh, this... Uh, uh, breaking of the position uh, sort of in Magnus's favor comes at the price of a pawn and of course Samuel grabs it bishop captures on h6 and this is where the fun really starts so the rook is hanging and uh, you would be of course uh, very happy if you could capture the knight and then uh, capture the bishop but the rook is hanging so here uh, after bishop captures on h6 we have knight to e4 Magnus attacks the queen on g3 Queen to e3, you are now defending the bishop twice, and now rook f to h8. And okay, you're down a pawn, but you have this immense pressure on the h file. And uh, here, best way for white to play this would be pawn to f3. But it's rapid, of course, you can't invest all that much time on every move. Point is that after knight g3, you will play bishop g5, attack the black queen, and after queen a5, you have this madness of a position where it's uh, impossible to evaluate is just you know uh, the better player wins in this position so here bishop to f3 was played instead of f3 and this gives magnus enough time to execute a central breakthrough and he plays pawn to e5 which is great uh, as the white king is still on e1 and okay d captures on e5 and now magnus goes queen to a5 uh, going for that c3 pawn. I will just show, uh, as it's a very nice line, uh, how uh, Magnus could have uh, just won the game on the spot. Uh, he could have played bishop captures and g4, which is weird because you allow uh, the recapture with check, but after bishop captures and king to b8, uh, your bishop on h6 is hanging, so you have to move it. You can't move it to g5 because then we just capture, capture, and the rook on h1 would be hanging, so you would have to go to f4, and now just rook captures on h4, and the white's position is terrible here for example captures captures uh, the bishop is hanging rook to h1 is coming and there's really not a good move here if you try something like e6 with check just king to a8 and if you try bishop to e2 to block rook to h1 with bishop to f1 uh, doesn't really matter now you're going to play g5 and after bishop to g3 queen a5 and the white will not be able to withstand all this pressure so that's one way to do it but in the game magnus played queen to a5 of course all of those ideas are still in the position he just started with a different move order uh, and and now, uh, why, why should counter this with king to f1? He should disregard the that the c3 pawn is hanging. He should play king f1. And now, if Magnus were to actually capture the pawn with knight captures on c3 or with queen captures on c3, uh, there are big problems here. Just queen captures, knight captures, and now let's say bishop to g5, and it's not... Um, not, not a great position for black. Black doesn't really have anything for the pawn. Bishop g5 now defends the h4 pawn, and it's uh, perfectly fine. And uh, of course, uh, yeah, after king f1, if you actually go for knight captures on c3, then you have this e6 move, and that is just very nasty stuff. Uh, now, you don't really have a good way of dealing with this. Uh, like, if you you can't capture a pawn, but let's say you move it. Uh, now comes bishop to g5. Everything is nicely defended, and you don't really have a threat that knight on c3 isn't really doing all that much. So, uh, something to consider. But uh, as Samuel was very low on time, he played rook to a3, defended the pawn this way, and now bishop to f5. Magnus uh, gets the bishop into the game. Now, g3, defending the h4 pawn also could be the way to do it. But here, Samuel castled kingside, and this is a recipe for disaster with the rooks doubled on the h file, and Magnus does not miss an opportunity uh, to, to, to go for the win here. Problem is, you can't capture right away. You would love to capture, capture, and then just eliminate the bishop but the bishop uh, will capture with check so magnus starts with king to b8 it is the absolute strongest move by the engine uh and now bishop to g5 defending the h4 pawn but uh, i mean not really just knight captures on g5 queen captures and the rook captures on h3 threatening rook to h1 checkmate and here samuel plays g3 so uh what's uh what's happening here can magnus win this game or not feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute strongest move for magnus while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you uh, uh, who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting a very, very difficult line. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to h5. This is the only move that wins the game. Uh, problem is that next move we are capturing the knight and there's no good way to recapture. Let's say queen f4. Uh, now you just play bishop captures on g4. And the light square bishop cannot capture because uh, white will just get destroyed with rook to h1. And if queen captures then knight captures on e5, attacks the queen and the bishop, and now you have to defend the bishop somehow, there are no good squares for that, if you go rook to f4, then rook f5, 
uh, and that's it. Uh, you will either suffer severe material loss or even uh, if you move the queen, you will get checkmated. For example, king g2, rook to h2 will be checkmate. So that was the way to do it. However, Magnus played rook captures on g4. It's the second uh, top move recommended by the engine, uh, but it does give black some chances. Bishop captures on g4 and now bishop to e4, which looks weird uh, because white can just play f3 obviously and stop checkmate, but that's exactly what Magnus uh, wants um, Samuel to do. Uh, and this whole idea works uh, due to the poor placement of the rook on a3. So f f3 is played, you have to play this, otherwise you're lost. And now queen to c5 check picks up the rook on a3. Very, very cool stuff. King to g2 and now queen captures on a3 and now the queen side pawns will fall as well. Uh, white has to recapture. We have queen captures on c3 and now even e captures on d5, grabbing that pawn. Uh, but this allows Magnus to uh, just play very, very precise chess. Now, if you play knight captures on e5, then it's not the most precise way. You will just go bishop to e2. Now the queen cannot capture because the knight hangs. And if you play rook to e8 to defend the knight, then just bishop to d1 defends the pawn. And it looks ugly for white, but white will uh, probably hold this. Uh, so after e captures on d5, Magnus plays the strongest queen captures on c2 check. Rook to f2, and now again only one way to win this game for Magnus, uh, and he finds it. Queen to b1, uh, threatening queen to h1, checkmate. I say he finds it, but he doesn't really find it as uh, he, he doesn't... Um, uh, proceed in the most precise way possible but Samuel was extremely low on time here so Magnus did not want to invest any extra time giving Samuel uh, well the comfort of, of uh, calculating on Magnus's time. So rook to f1 and here uh, you have to play queen to b2 check, Qu uh, queen b2 check, rook f2 and now queen captures on e5 uh, threatening to capture the queen and of course if you just trade everything uh, the, the, the end game is completely winning for black. Uh, but in the game Magnus played queen to e4 with check, bishop to f3 and now queen captures on e5, now it's a bit easier to defend this. Now queen captures on g6 still threatening to win the knight, knight to d4 and now we have queen to e4 offering a queen trade, Magnus trades here a queen captures on e4 bishop captures and rook to e8 now and uh, now it's uh, it's pretty much an equal end game material is equal bishop against the knight but Samuel extremely low on time below the one minute mark way below the one minute mark and magnus uh, comfortably I, I believe over over five minutes so d6 was played here uh, we have king to c8 uh, of course you need the king to stop this pass pawn at some point and also king is very important in the end game and now you have to play rook to f4 pretty much the only move that uh, guarantees a draw for white, uh, putting pressure on the knight, putting pressure on the pawn here, and at some point you will win the c4 pawn. But in the game, bishop to d5 was played right away, and this just threatens nothing. It does have the immediate threat of bishop captures on c4, but it's not your move. Magnus just plays c3, and that's it. Rook to f7 was played, going after uh, the pawn, also d7 check is being threatened, but now rook to e2 with check. King to h3 and pawn to c2 and there is no good way to, to do anything here. You don't have time for d7 check, you will not be able to promote the pawn. So rook to c7 check was played, and now Magnus goes king to d8. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, if he goes king to b8, then it's a draw. Uh, white will just move the rook and advance the pawn, and that's enough for a draw. You don't have time for rook to e1, rook to c1. But Magnus just played rook to king to d8, and he was in this position on move 42 that uh, Samuel Tersakian resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done. Here, there is no counterplay. Uh, the knight defends the pawn, so next move we're just going to play rook e1 and c1, and that's it. You don't uh, have a way of putting pressure on that pawn in any way, and that's just it. d7 does nothing, like you move the rook now. Like the, the, I mean, it's pointless. King d7 will pick up the pawn, and that's it. So pretty crazy game, uh, as it, it as it usually is in the in the vinegar variation of the French. Uh, Magnus comes up on top, but as you as you've seen, it was not a one-sided game, not at all. Uh, but I mean, so many uh, so many turnarounds in this uh, uh, rapid format and I believe we can expect all the games to be like this. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First game uh, we are showing with the FIDE World Rapid Championship. Uh, do use hashtag, hashtag suggestion and uh, as I will uh, check out all of your suggestions, uh, I imagine there, there will be some spectacular games uh, played here. Uh, so thank you all uh, uh, for, for joining in. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ricky Black, uh, Lars Oliver, uh, Ground Heba, uh, Jeff Graves, David Rice Oxley, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, the coverage of the FIDE Rapid World Rapid Championship uh, until it finishes.
Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.